Support for Greater Chattanooga is provided by Lamp Post Group and UBS. I think the philosophy of making is just the idea that you should feel empowered to make whatever it is that you can imagine, whether that be sitting down and writing code to make a piece of software, or the ability to sit down at a CNC machine for the first time and, and cut a piece of wood out or a piece of metal out to make a, a physical product that you're trying to build. It's about not only knowing how to do those things and being able to do those things, but wanting to share in that with everybody else. And I think that's kind of the maker philosophy is uh, making things, particularly the knowledge half of it, really accessible. Kind of like what the internet did for information, let's go ahead and do that with the idea of making, let's make it accessible, let's make it so that everybody can afford to make things. Oh yeah, that looks like you can fix it. All right, now lift that up. Oh, awesome. The project we're bringing to the Maker Faire is called Mox Arcade, and it's a like 80 styles arcade cabinet with games built and designed and developed and deployed by students here at UTC. The goal of the project isn't so much to make games for the arcade cabinet, but to encourage students to make games, be them good or bad, regardless. I guess you're gonna go to life. Late last spring, we were like, let's make an arcade cabinet so people would actually have a place to put it. And in that way, we've encouraged people to actually start finishing or even starting their games. Uh, a lot of 2D platformers or top-down adventure games. I made this game called Inverse Worlds, and the idea being that you, you jump around as a little platformer, but you can hit these portals, and all of the walls are now the floors, and all the floors are now the walls. You walk in the negative space of the level. And we have a clone of Bomberman. If anyone played that old NES game where you have to place bombs on a grid and not be blown up by your friends but we, we made it with monkeys and bananas instead of bombs and bomber men. I'd really love to see more software projects in the maker movement. A lot of times the things you see at the maker movement are, are physical, are like pots and wheels and fire and robots and all those things are cool, but there's an underrepresentation of software. And we make software, it's just like making hardware. Um, so by having the arcade cabinet there, which is our physical representation of an otherwise intangible product, I hope to see more software growing in the maker movement. There's so many different types of making. I've been thinking about that. Like, If you work on an assembly line for Volkswagen, you are making. If you are creating music, you're making. And so I think that there are so many different kinds of making. And what, we, what our takeaway for making is different. And so I think pottery and the making of, of something that's so old and so rich and so, I don't know, beautiful, um, is a whole different making process and it comes from a whole different place and our takeaway is completely different. And our motive for making may be really different than other people that make other things, especially that are more technology related. I just think that giving people an opportunity to actually experience the making themselves will have, you know, opportunities in the workshops for probably 50 people to be able to try making pottery. And it may also encourage them to want to pursue, you know, making either pottery or something else and, and enjoy the process. There's just something about working with your hands. I don't know how to describe it. That's just very, very satisfying. And it's fun to watch people take pride in, I made that. I think that the more people that know how to make, the more things people are likely to go ahead and make. And the more things that people are out there making, the more likely somebody who's building something is going to say, I think I can turn that into a business, or I think I can maybe start doing this on a contract basis, or I can build this product and actually sell it to people, which a lot of products have been born out of Maker Faires in that way. A lot of 3D printing companies have been born out of Maker Faires. Um, a lot of new digital fabrication tools have been born out of Maker Faires. And so um, I think that's the big tie-in right there that I think some people won't necessarily see right off the bat, but I think is going to be the bigger long-term impact if we start to promote making as a brand in the community and owning that as a community. I think making is important for a lot of different reasons, but I don't know that it's about what they make. I, I always go back to the process of making and how um, it's important to make because when we make, that's when I feel probably 
fucking emotional, like the most connected to who I am. I mean, I feel like we are creators. We were created in God's image to create whoever God is or whatever that is to us that 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 part of our, our makeup and who we are is about making. I love Chattanooga, um, and you can see this most in like the last couple of years, but this is a big rise of entrepreneurship and making things and doing things. And I can't stress anything more than enough. I like people who do stuff. Um, and I feel that Chattanooga is becoming a hub of people who do stuff. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to see more of the series, subscribe on YouTube to be notified when new stories are available. Thanks.